the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later, you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, I don't know how many of you have seen them. I see them a lot. Little glass globes with a teeny tiny little mustard seed inside. People wear them around their neck. They often get used in Sunday school as a prop to help teach this lesson. I think that's a wonderful metaphor, a beautiful image. But there's a downside to that as well. If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could tell this mulberry tree to be uprooted and move to the sea and it would obey you. But what if you tell that mulberry tree to move and it doesn't? Does that mean that something is lacking in you? Does that mean that your faith is deficient? Lots and lots of people use this scripture and others like it to pass judgment on other people's faith. I hope you haven't heard these words, but I've heard them. If you only had faith enough, that would not have happened. That would not have happened to you. It would not have happened to your child. would not have happened to your parents. If you only had enough faith you would have made it through that trial. You would have succeeded in that thing you were trying to do. And this beautiful metaphor, this idea of faith in God gets used as a weapon and used as a way of judging others. Now, reading this passage on its surface, that might seem like a reasonable way to interpret it, But I have to tell you that that doesn't make sense. That doesn't work. It's not consonant with the rest of what the Gospels say and other things that Jesus teaches and tells us. So we have to look again and see if there's something else going on. I read that line pretty straight a few moments ago. And I wish that I had been a fly on the wall and I wish that someone we knew had been there so that they could see Jesus' affect and hear the way he intonated that sentence to know how his disciples responded. But here's how I hear it. Lord, increase our faith. (laughs) If you only had faith the size of a mustard seed... You could tell that mulberry tree to get up and move to the ocean and it would obey you. Faith. Faith doesn't have anything to do with the ability to perform miraculous acts. Faith doesn't have anything to do with being able to manipulate and control the things around us. Faith means trust, belief. And so I hope that when the disciples came to Jesus and said, Lord, increase our faith, 
they were asking him to help them believe that he was who they thought he was. To believe that he was the manifestation of God in the world and the way that he was interacting with them and the world around him is the way that God interacts with us. They were asking Jesus to help them to believe that they could, in and through him, find a way to live a life that was somehow infused with the eternal. But I don't think that's what Jesus thought they were asking because he goes right to mustard seeds and mulberry trees and things moving from dry land to the ocean. I think he knew what they were asking for. They were asking for something very different than trust and belief in who he was and what he was saying. I think that interpretation is borne out by the next place that Jesus goes He hears them asking for the ability to perform miraculous acts so that they can up their status, so they can stand next to him, so that they can have some of the glory that's due to Jesus. He talks about masters and slaves. He talks about serving the master first. He's telling them that he will take care of those hard things. And what they need to do is trust and believe in him. I will tell you that there have been times in my life where I wished that I could command that mulberry tree to move. There have been circumstances where if I could have changed the outcome or fixed something that was broken, I would have given anything to be able to do that. And we pray for that all the time. The deepest longings of our hearts, what we want most in those moments of tragedy and pain or hurt or suffering, we share them with God and somehow, somehow hope that God will intervene and if not fix the problem, at least help us to walk through it. I have talked to people who believe that God has intervened on their behalf or on behalf of someone in their life and a miracle has occurred. And I would never question those experiences. But I think for me, at least, when I am praying for that kind of a miracle, what I'm doing is telling God the deepest secrets of my heart and hoping beyond hope that God will care for me and for the people for whom I'm praying. Mulberry trees moving. Matthew adds mountains moving to the sea. That's a difficult metaphor if it gets used as a way to judge. But I do think that it has some value if we can return to it for just a moment. If, in fact, what Jesus is asking of us is a faith that trusts, loves, and believes in him. And if we can do that with even just a little bit of ourselves, then we become a representation, a manifestation of God's love in the world, a sacrament, an outward and visible sign of an inner and spiritual truth. And if we can do that, Our presence in the world might just change someone else. It might invite them in to the truth that we know and understand. That God created all of us to love and respect and uphold one another. That God longs for us to live in a world that is characterized by peace and love. If we can manifest that in the world, other people might be drawn to that truth. Other people through our witness might begin to live in that way. And while moving a mulberry tree might be a pretty fancy parlor trick, I think offering someone else a way into the light and love and mercy and grace of God is a much more profound and powerful act. 
the disciples come to Jesus and say, Lord, increase our faith. We don't really know what they were asking. We don't know what it was exactly that they wanted, but we can infer a lot from the way this conversation goes And I think the first thing we need to do is step away from the temptation to think that bad things happen because people are bad or lacking or wanting in some way. It didn't happen because their faith wasn't strong enough. And then the next thing that we can do is to let the faith that is within us, the trust and belief in and love of God, radiate manifest, shower upon the people in our lives who are struggling with that faith, wondering if, in fact, God does love them in the midst of that tragedy and help them to see that God does. Lord, increase our faith so that our faith might light the way for others and their faith might be increased and that their faith might light the way for still others and others and others. And soon, someday, we'll all be standing together in that faith, in that love and light and mercy and grace of God.